Fabian of Scotland Yard. In the nation's war on crime, Scotland Yard is the brain of Great Britain's manhunting machine. Routine, detail, science, and tenacity. These are the weapons used by squads of highly trained men. Men like former Inspector Robert Fabian, hailed by the press as one of England's greatest detectives. My name is Fabian, Detective Inspector Robert Fabian. I was getting used to this case. Andrew Haggerty, an insurance agent, was the bathtub killer's fifth victim, fifth in 18 days. The murder detail was already on the job, surgeon, photography, and fingerprints. They could almost handle this particular type of case in their sleep. Hello, Doc. Well, it's the same picture as the others, not a detail missing. Oh, death by drowning, huh? Yes, and a large lump at the base of the skull, knocked him out first. Our old friend, the blunt instrument, huh? Yes, but I don't know what shape. The body was submerged in the bath and dropped on its back. So we can safely assume it wasn't an accident. Not unless he was trying to take a nap underwater. <laughs> it's homicide, all right. All right, thank you, Doc. Bob, come here a moment. What is it, Eddie? These marks on the floor. The body was dragged into here. It's a nasty way to go. Any prints yet? Only the dead man's. Plenty of smudges, his own, the cleaning woman's. Keep checking, Hawkins. I want samples of everybody in the house. Right, sir. Slugged just like the others and then dropped in to drown. Mm. An insurance agent. And I hope he insured himself. It's the same method in each case. As if the fellow gets a kick out of drowning him. Well, he probably does. That's one pattern. There's no motive to the general picture. Well, he's a psycho. He's insane. Well, he's still got to have a reason. Even a psycho has to have a psycho motive. Oh, I'm so glad you've come, Jim. Darling, what on earth's the matter? Oh, that makes me feel better. Safer. Safer? Why, did you meet a fellow who bowled you over or something? Oh, you know, that couldn't happen. It's... Oh, I know I'm being silly. Silly? You? I didn't make you an assistant buyer for being silly. It's this bathtub case. The drowning last night. Marion, I told you not to read such stuff. It scares the daylight out of you. I used to know Andrew Haggerty. Oh, the fellow in the papers. Did you know him well? Oh, not really, no. I hadn't seen him for years. We lived in the same street. We were kids together. Darling. I know this has been a shock. But surely you can see it has nothing to do with you. Hmm? Now let's forget it. We've got a stack of invitations to address, haven't we? Yes, they're on the desk. Ada Freeman, 27 years old. David Southby was 28. Edith Flaxman, 27. Samuel Winch, 28. Andrew Haggerty, 27, the last victim, sold insurance. He lived alone but were seriously interested in a girl, and they discussed marriage. Somehow, we had to find the motive. These seemingly unrelated murders had to have a common denominator, a common cause. I don't get it, Bob. I just don't get it. Oh, perhaps a little fresh air will tear your head, Sergeant. I want you to go over to Somerset House. Did one of them leave a will? No, but uh, those five people are all in the same age group, born within six months of one another. Yeah, that's odd. No. The fact that they were all murdered the same way is the odd thing. Anyway, see what you can dig up in their birth certificates, marriage licenses. Perhaps the connecting link lies there. You know, families, relatives, past histories. Somerset House, built beside the Thames on the site of an old royal palace, is the resting place for all records of births, marriages and deaths registered in England. 
Somewhere in its vast filing system, I hoped to find a connection between the five murdered people. But my sergeant got no place fast. No family information came to the surface. But one fact stood out. Four of the bathtub killer's victims had been born within a few miles of one another. We grasped at any straw and went back to the streets where the victims had been wheeled in their baby carriages, questioning people, seeking someone who might have remembered the victims as children. I had to find whatever it was that linked people together, that might link others to a death by drowning. And in one street, the man we wanted watched us from his window. They've started to look for me. But you mustn't worry yourself, Robert. I'm in complete command of the situation. The papers say that Fabian of the Yard is on the case. You'll have to get up much earlier to figure this one out. What? No, Robert, I'm, I'm quite sure I've given him nothing to go on. No fingerprints, no one saw me. Not a single clue, nothing. Well, my son, it's your birthday next week. 28 candles for your cake. Soon it will be 30. But you'll have a good birthday present. I promise you that. All of them. They'll be with you then. All six of them. What did you say, Robert? No. No, I've not found Marion Cortland yet. But I will. I will. She's, she's not as easy as the others. I can't imagine where she's disappeared to. But if she's in London, I'll find her. For your birthday party. I think you'd like these, Mr. Porter. Huh? Two of our newest mysteries. Our detective fans, in fact, everybody recommends them. I don't feel in the mood for that stuff today. Oh, I thought you adored a good murder. I do, but not to read about. That is, right now. <laughs> You'll be sorry you didn't take them. I'm sure I won't. I found her. She returned to her old parish church to be married. The news item even gave her a dress. Well, Robert, She'll be at your party now, just as I promised. In the map room at the yard, the frequency of various types of crime is recorded on huge maps. Murder, robbery, auto theft, burglary. Each is represented by a colored flag or pin for study as to districts and spread throughout the city. Some crimes seem to spread like an infection. Five red flags located the bathtub murders. An infection I had to stop. This is Ladbury area, sir. Uh -huh. And the white flags mark the birthplaces you gave me. Yes, I'm afraid they don't help much. We've been right through the district. No one appears to recall the families. The white flags started here, mm -hmm. grew up, moved away, and I'm afraid became red flags. Yes, in the past 18 days. Now the assistant commissioner wants my scalp. I'm not telling him the reason why. The more white flags we get, the better our luck in forecasting a result. I don't want any more white flags. Or some unlucky man or woman may not get out of the bath tonight. Hmm. Marion, hurry up, darling. They're giving this party for us, you know. I'll be right out. Oh, Mrs. Booley, if anybody comes about the apartment, just show them around, will you? I know how, sir. I've done it before. We've taken a house in Richmond. That's nice. It's got a garden. They're nice, sometimes. I'm all ready, darling. Good, well, let's get going. We're the guests of honor. Must be on time. I know. Bye-bye, Mrs. Booty. See you in the morning. Have a nice time. Taxi? Yes. You're Marion. Marion Cortland. I remember you as a youngster, after school. One of Robert's friends. Yes, this is my lucky day. I wonder, that'd be very lucky indeed, to see the place in advance. Seems very comfortable. What are the other rooms? Well, um, the bedroom in there, that's what she calls the kitchen. The bathroom, that in there. 
I'm very particular about bathrooms. May I see it, please? <laughs> well, there's no reason not to. Just cleaned it up fresh. Here we are, sir. If you don't like the colour scheme, the landlord's willing to paint this room over. It'll do fine. Oh, you're easy to suit, sir. Do both taps in the bathtub work properly? Oh, of course they do. Will you... Will you turn them on, please? Hot and cold? Both? Yes, both of them. Yes. Yes, it's perfect. My efforts to seek a pattern for murder brought me back to the map room at the yard. I felt that somehow the grouping of white pins, the birthplaces of the bathtub killer's victims, should tell me something. It is unusual, sir. Four out of five people killed by the same person being born within a mile of each other. Yes. Could be coincidence. Highly improbable. Now, they were killed because of something that happened in the past. You've checked on that angle, sir? Yes. Drawn a complete blank. They grew up there. They went to school, went to church, some of them moved on, got married. But they were all drowned the same way. Obviously, someone hated them. Yes, yeah, somebody from the past. Difficult to say where hatred starts. Oh, on the playground, at school, on the first job. School. Yes, we haven't dug deep enough there. But we're going to. Thanks, Peter. All right, sir. A Miss Langley had been teaching at the school for the past 25 years. The impression little boys make on their teachers is not as lasting as they think. But she remembered Ada Freeman. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Ada was a bright girl. Oh, but these others are... Yes, of course, they are mixed up in that bathtub mystery. Well, we'd like your help, Miss Langley. Oh, but what? I don't know them. I don't want my name in the papers. But you remember Ada Freeman? Please tell me about her. Well, she was good at games and mathematics and spelling, too. Odd, isn't it, that I should remember that and forget the others? Did she have friends? I mean, girls? Boys? Oh, yes, of course. Now, I seem to recall a boy. Parker or Porter? Yes, Bobby Porter. He used to carry her books for her. <laughs> Quite a crush. <laughs> yes. Tell me, were there any arguments over Ada Freeman? Uh, any fights between Bobby and his other boyfriends? Oh, no, not with Bobby. He was far too much of a gentleman, just like his father. Well, I'd like to talk to his father. I've seen him in church lately. They used to live in Stuart Road. I'm not sure of the exact address. Stuart Road. Well, thank you, Miss Langley. Good morning. Good morning. The city directory gave me Robert Porter's street number. We dropped around to see him. Well, Inspector, I rather pride myself on my memory. Robert's schoolmates were my friends, too. Have you seen any of them lately? They were in and out of the house, but that was years ago. No, I don't imagine that Robert's kept in touch with them. Oh, so your son's away from home, is he? Yes, Brazil. We always plan for him to travel. He's doing very well out there. How long has he been out of the country? Oh, about two years. No, two and a half. Now, what can you tell me about the others? Haggerty, Southby, Samuel Wench, Edith Flaxman. Oh, they've gone. All of them. Moved away. No. They're dead. Killed. Bless my soul. How awful. That's what they must have been talking about at the church supper the other night, when Ada Freeman's name was mentioned. You don't mean that case in the paper. Yes. Which church was it? St. Delford's. Robert went to Sunday school there with the others, I think. That's what I was hoping. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Porter. You're welcome. And if anything else occurs, you'll find me at the yard, won't you? I'll certainly do that. Thank you. Good day. Robert, did I say too much? I shouldn't have mentioned the church to him. Still, it doesn't matter now. It's nearly over, Robert. Tonight, I think. Yes, the execution will take place tonight. And there must be a policeman. They were as much to blame as the others, weren't they, son? They didn't do a thing. Yes. After Marion, a policeman. Then I'm through. 
Hello? Miss Cortland? Miss Marion Cortland? I don't suppose you remember me. I'm Robert Porter's father. Oh, yes, Mr. Porter, I remember. Well, of course I remember, Bobby. No, no, I'm not free tonight. I'm afraid it's rather urgent. I must come over and speak with you, just for a moment, please. No, all right, then I'll wait for you. Yes, I'll be alone. Goodbye. Jim, darling? No, I haven't changed my mind. I still love you. But it's about tonight. Look, could you leave it till 8 o'clock? Well, there's someone coming from the church and I'll have to see them. I'll tell you all about it later, darling. Bye for now. Mr. Fabian will learn nothing at the vicarage. They've all forgotten we ever existed. We'll be together soon, Robert. You and I. But tonight, I am an executioner. My wife will be down in a moment, Inspector. A very methodical woman, my wife. Reason I married her. She keeps everything neatly filed away. Even my worst sermons. Yes, I'm I... sorry to intrude, sir. Oh, not at all, not at all. We're used to the police coming here. We had a visit from a police constable about ten years ago. He was a tall chap with a pronounced lisp. Well, this is he... an urgent matter, sir. Perhaps your wife could tell me what I want to know. My wife? Oh, no, 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 no. She's gone over the way to look at television. Oh, well, it's about that list of names I showed you, sir. Did any of those go to your Sunday school as youngsters? Uh, Southby, Haggerty, Freeman. Oh, yes, Freeman. Yes, 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 yes. These are all my girls and boys. Southby, yes. Very fast type, that. Motorcycles, you know. It... Did they have anything in common, sir? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Sunday school attendance medal, they all tried for it. Yes, and uh, anything else, sir? We consider that quite a lot around here, Inspector. Yes, I'm sure you do. But I was thinking of some experience, pleasant or unpleasant, that they might have all shared. Oh, I don't think I can recall anything of that nature. I wouldn't include tragedy in that category. Tragedy? What tragedy? Oh, about 12 years ago, a boy fell into the river, couldn't swim, was drowned. What boy? It happened at a senior Sunday school picnic. A tragic thing. No one saw him fall in. The boy's father was quite bereft. A widower losing his only child. Who was this boy? Oh, a fine boy. The father insisted that the other youngsters were to blame. Should have saved him. But while they were of the same party, they didn't see the accident. Uh, Marion Cortland was speaking to me about it only last night. Please, and... can you tell me his name? Oh, no, I don't think I can remember that. Now, let me see. Brainland? Warder? Porter? Robert Porter, by any chance? Porter. Yes, that's it, I think. And you say that Mr. Porter held these six youngsters responsible and that this Marion Cortland was one of them? Yes, she had nothing to do with it, of course. None of them did. Where can I find her? As a matter of fact, the public library telephoned me just before dinner about a page torn from our church bulletin. The page with the announcement of Marion's wedding. That means that Porter's located her. What's her address? Uh, wait a minute, I think I have it here. I, I wrote it down yesterday. I, uh, yes, uh, 18 Marble Street. 18 Marble Street. I've got to work first. Vicar, bring the yard, tell them to pick up Robert Porter, and tell them that I'll be at Marion Cortland's apartment. Of course. Hmm. I never saw such a single-minded man in all my days. Ah. Hello? Oh, Dr. Reynolds, how nice of you to ring me. Yes, I'm quite free now. Porter, how good to see you. May I come in? Yes, please do. I've been searching everywhere for you, Marion. Oh, what for? Robert's giving a party next week. His 28th birthday. The others will be there, all of them. Southby, Haggerty, Ada Freeman. Andrew Haggerty? What do you mean? 
You killed him? No. It was an execution. He paid for his crime. A crime against me. Against Robert. You're mad. No. The others. You left Robert to die in the river. No one tried to save him. I didn't know. You must believe You're me. all to blame. Can't you go any faster? Miss Cortland here? No, I've been waiting for her. How did you get in? The door was open. When you left this afternoon, I, I remembered Marion and thought I might get some information about Robert's friends from her. I told you to phone me. Dr. Fabian was played by Bruce Seaton. Now, let us meet the real Bob Fabian, former superintendent of detectives at Scotland Yard, the man called England's greatest detective. Police science and routine police work make it increasingly difficult for the so-called invisible killer to escape. It wasn't brilliant detection, just routine work that located and stopped Mr. Porter. And he is now in an asylum for the criminally insane. <laughs>